<laughs> All right, without further ado, let's introduce our next session. Uh, next up, we are going to be talking about removing AWS policy review fatigue with automated Terraform resource analysis. And to help us learn more about that is Mohammed. And Mohammed is has been working at Yelp in the infrastructure security department for a little over a year now. Uh, they are also an intern that had an internship at the Department of National Defense Canada, where Mohammed worked on software related to network security. And so without further ado, let me bring on Mohammed. Hello and welcome. Hi. Thank you for welcome. having me. Did we cover everything that we you would like to introduce you? Or do you want to just jump right into the talk? Yeah, no, that was that was a great introduction. I think that's a good summary of my professional career. And, uh, you know, if there's any questions, Excellent. happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'm ready to jump into the talk. Awesome. Sounds now good. Now you're going to be doing. sharing. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Are you going to be sharing uh, your screen? Because it's not currently there. Yes. Just one second. I'm getting still used to there screen a little bit. There yeah. we go. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, take it away. And thank you for joining Excellent. us. Excellent. Cool. Thank you. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Mohammed. I'm a software engineer in the infrastructure security department at Yelp. And today I'm going to be talking about removing AWS policy review fatigue with automated Terraform resource analysis. Without further ado, let's begin. All right, so a little bit more about who I am. Uh, again, I'm on Yelp's InfraSec team where we maintain, design, and implement systems which ensure the security of Yelp's Infra. My job consists of AWS cloud security work, reviewing system proposals, PRs from other teams, and a lot more. Some of my hobbies are kickboxing, content creation, and reading. You know, I love working at Yelp because I get the time to pursue these interests outside of work, which is very important to me. And in this talk, I'd like to first lay a foundation of the life of an InfraSec on-call and talk about a few pain points here. So the on-call is a week-long responsibility where we respond to a lot of different issues. The one I'd like to focus on is code reviews. So the on-call for InfraSec is a required reviewer on many infrastructure as code changes. Some of these include IAM groups, users, roles, S3 buckets, and more. Since we're the owner of these namespaces, whenever other teams want to create changes to resources or create new resources in these namespaces, they require us to review the PRs before they can merge their code. Until we review and approve the PRs, they cannot merge their code. So we're the bottleneck in this workflow. So here's a very, very high level overview of what the previous workflow looked like for us. So a user makes a PR and notably, even in the case of no errors, no errors, no security issues, they still have to wait for a security review, which can take a long time. The next pain point is the time investment from the on-calls perspective. The on-call receives a lot of review requests, mostly for benign changes, which is a huge time sink. The complexity of policies leads to training new hires taking a long time, but grokking complex policies takes a long time for the seasoned reviewer as well. So in the latter case, while the seasoned reviewer will be familiar with AWS policy semantics, just the process of reviewing a long policy will take a long time. All that can be summarized by saying IAM policies can get very complex very fast. And then the next pain point I'd like to address is the frequency of these review requests. This might look familiar to you if you had a setup similar to us where your team or yourself were a required reviewer before code could be merged. Basically, the on-call becomes a full-time Terraform engineer for the week of their shift. To summarize, reviewing policy changes is a time sink and it is a fatiguing process due to the frequency. Furthermore, human error can allow misconfigurations to slip through. So this could be, for example, the new hire we talked about before they may not fully understand AWS policy semantics yet and approve a PR in error, which had a security issue, or it could be the seasoned reviewer who's so fatigued by their 10th review that they miss a security issue that they otherwise would not have. So we've observed some of the pain points. Let's touch on the good and bad of the status quo. So again, this is where we were a few months ago. We had a secure, easy to understand and easy to implement workflow. However, this led to the on-call becoming a full-time PR reviewer for the week of their shift. And due to the review fatigue and interruptions, the on-call's engineering productivity was significantly lower. It's hard to focus on engineering work when you have Slack pings for review requests every couple of minutes. 
And this fatigue, again, may lead to approving a PR and error. So the next question comes, can we do better? Can we go from this slow and secure process to fast and secure? And yes, we can. That's where automation or automated static resource analysis comes into play. The first step in this is picking a static analysis tool. And there are a lot of options in the open source community. In the next few slides, I'll touch on our requirements specifically and which tool we select. So here's some of our requirements. The tool needs to be easy to integrate at an early stage of the infrastructure as code pipeline. And the tool needs to provide an excellent user experience, clearly reporting the errors back to the user in an easy to understand way. Given this and a few more requirements, we went with Regular. Now, why is Regular a good fit for Yelp? Well, it offers plan file scanning capabilities. It has built-in community, community checks that cover a lot of problematic security issues, which is a huge time saver for us since we don't have to write these checks ourselves. Rules are easy to write and test. Good test coverage is very important to us. And there's the ability to suppress resource at a very, very granular level. Because of the way our Terraform modules are set up, this was a feature that we definitely needed and it was a hard requirement. Now let's talk about what the goal here is, right? The goal with integrating regular is to emulate a human review programmatically. And let's touch on the state of our infra a little bit prior to integration. In our infra, we use Atlantis, which is a Terraform PR automation tool. This runs on an EC2 instance inside of a Docker container, and it listens for GitHub events. On certain GitHub events, such as you know, an explicit GitHub comment or a new commit, Atlantis will plan. And on certain GitHub events, such as an explicit GitHub comment as well, Atlantis will apply. A plan is basically like a dry run, so like a Terraform plan where it shows you what changes will take place and apply will actually apply those changes. Atlantis also offers custom workflows in which we can specify certain other actions to be taken during the plan or apply stage. So for example, we can say, do the Terraform plan, but also run a Python script at the same time. In the next few slides, I'll elaborate on the goal a little, and then we'll touch on status checks, displaying the output to the user, handling false positives, and preventing merging of critical security vulnerabilities. So again, to hone in on the goal, the output for regular looks like this. And our goal is to take this output, display it to the user, right? In a way that's easy to understand. If we can do that, we've effectively programmatically emulated a human review. This is an example of what a human reviewer would do. So let's break it down even further. What we're trying to do is we wanna specify whether the PR should be approved or not, point out clearly what can be approved in the PR, Consider the rare cases where broad actions may be needed, like when a user wants to create an administrator policy and request changes on PR with critical security vulnerabilities. This is what we've been able to do programmatically. So the first step we're gonna talk about is the status checks. This is the human equivalent of approving or requesting changes on a PR. So in the custom workflow, we use a Python script to run regular on the Terraform plan file Regular will then return a JSON output, which contains a bunch of information, but notably it contains a number of successful checks and the number of failed checks. We can then use this to infer whether the scan resulted in a plan uh, in a success or a failure. So if you know there was more than zero failures, then you know we're going to report back a failing status check. And posting a status check is very easy using PyGitHub. Now, PyGitHub does require a few arguments, and we're able to get these arguments from the from Atlantis because Atlantis has a bunch of environment variables right out of the box that we can use. Some of the environment variables that we make use of are the SHA and the pull request number. Now, here's an example of what the status checks look like. So, you know, the first one is of course a passing status check, and the second one shows a failing status check. And this will make it very clear for the developer whether the PR is looking good or whether it requires some changes. The next one I'd like to touch on is formatting output. This is the human equivalent of posting an easy to understand comment on the PR for the developer. The main information we need for this is a failing rule ID, a description of the rule, the resource that it's failing for, the severity of the failure, and a remediation doc. We want to take all this information and then format it into a nice comment, and we can again post it with PyGitHub. We can get all this information very easily from the regular JSON output. And here's an example of what the comments look like in our workflow. So this clearly points out the failing rule, which resource it's failing for, 
and it points to documentation which the user can reference to figure out how to fix the issue. Next, I'd like to touch on custom rules. This is the human equivalent of applying Yelpy knowledge to the review. So custom rules are rules we create for Yelpy use cases. Now I mentioned before, regular comes with some rules out of the box. Those are great and very useful. And they are generic in the sense that they'll point out common security vulnerabilities. So for example, you know, uh, S3 buckets shouldn't be public or star on star actions should not be allowed. But we need to be able to go further than that because for example, we have custom policies in our AWS environment, which are overprivileged, which we don't want to use in most scenarios. So if a developer attaches that, we want to point that out and say, hey, this policy should not be attached. And that's what we're able to do with custom rules. We host these rules in an internal repository, and we clone the internal repository inside of the Atlantis Docker container. Now, that's well and good, but how can we reference these rules when we run regular? Well, we use the Atlantis pre-workflow hooks to clone the repository in the container. From there, we can use regular config files. A config file basically allows us to specify all of our CLI flags in one file, so we don't have to have one long command. And we always clone the repository in the exact same path inside the Docker container. Now we can put that path inside of the config file, reference the config file uh, in our Python code, and now our custom rules are referenced. Next, let's touch on waivers. Waivers are the human equivalent of taking calculated security risks. So sometimes failing infrastructure as code changes are valid and required. An example of this is when an admin policy is created or again, a public S3 bucket policy is created. Waivers are gonna allow for the suppression of a rule for a resource and regular handers waivers with a rego file. Now, a slight issue here is a lot of developers are not familiar with rego. So we wanted to make this process easy and intuitive for developers of adding new waivers. We did this by creating a YAML abstraction so developers only deal with a YAML file, and then we have a hook that runs, that converts that YAML file into Red. So here's an example of this. This is the YAML file that the developer would deal with. So for example, if a developer wants to suppress this rule ID FG underscore R triple zero two seven for their resource, they would simply add their resource onto the list, and then the hook will run and it will convert it to a Rego file, which will look something like this. Now there's another benefit of waivers that I'd like to point out. We now have documentation of each calculated security risk that we've taken. Initially, we created 311 waivers in our infrastructure and we're very excited to get to work on fixing these. All jokes aside, it's much better to have this documentation than not. Again, now we know all the security risks that we've taken and we can reference these say in some sort of periodic time period like three months or six months, go back to the waivers and look at that risk and see if we still need it. If not, we're gonna stop taking that security risk. This is something we didn't used to do before. If we took some temporary security risk, it wasn't documented, so it was on the developer or the security engineer to follow up on that. And sometimes they would forget, which meant that we had this security risk in our infrastructure for a long, long time. This is no longer the case. The next part I'd like to touch on is preventing critical security vulnerabilities. This is the human equivalent of doing a double take on a PR to likely request changes or get more context on it before we issue an approval. So we block PRs with critical issues from being merged without security approval. There's a very small subset of rules which we mark as critical severity rules. PRs with these issues cannot be merged and we block developers from shipping these by returning a non-zero exit code from the Python script. That non-zero exit code will lead to an unsuccessful Atlantis plan. And Atlantis plan is a prerequisite for an Atlantis apply. Since the developer will not be able to plan, they will not be able to apply. Once they get security approval, we can create a waiver for it. And then the plan will go through successfully and they will be able to apply. Here's an example of this. If a developer wants to create a star on star policy, the Atlantis plan step will fail. Notably, that's the uh, third status, check, or rather the second status check over here. And in other words, you shall now pass without security review. So let's talk about the life of the on-call post this integration. Now, 
developers can get a security review on their PR as soon as they create it. InfraSec is confident that critical security issues that we care about are not making their way into production. And the InfraSec on call has a reduced workload in terms of PR reviews, reducing review fatigue. Let's see this visually in the next slide to really emphasize where we've removed the bottleneck. So in the updated workflow, notably, in the case of no errors, the developer has the freedom to go ahead and merge and move forward with their workflow. So a lot of progress has been made, but some work remains. While we've been able to reduce review fatigue, we have not been able to remove the bottleneck completely. Ideally, we only want the on-call to review PRs with serious security issues, and this is what we strive for next. Another point to note is that rules may not be comprehensive enough to catch all nuanced bad practices, especially as AWS services and features are updated. This is a trade-off that we're willing to make for the increased productivity. The benefits up until this point are increasing developer velocity and reducing security reviews bottleneck. The end goal is to take this one step further. Can we maximize developer velocity while maintaining security? This would involve removing security reviewers from the critical path completely. We think we can accomplish this, though this will require more developer education on factors like least privilege and increased custom rule coverage. Here are some references uh, for some things I have uh, used in these slides. And I will take any questions. Uh, excellent job there, Mohammed, and uh, thank you so much for presenting all that. Um, the first thing I wanted to, we'll take questions for folks, drop them in the chat. We're monitoring that actively right now. So if you have any questions for Mohammed based on this topic, let us know. We'd be happy to get them asked on stream here. But Mohammed, the first thing I have to ask you is where do I go to leave a Yelp review for your talk? <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, that I mean, you saying that alone is enough. I know some, uh, you know, my manager and a few other people are watching right now. So that alone uh, means a lot. I really appreciate that. <laughs> that was fantastic. I give it five stars. Five stars. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's very um, Yelpy of you, Brian. Yeah. Very what? Yelpy of yeah. you? Yeah. Yes. I like that you you had something in there. I forget what I, I vaguely remember called Yelpy, right? What was that about again? Mom? Yeah, the custom rules. The custom rules. Yeah, that was a great name as well. Very Yelpy. Very, yeah. very I, um, I, I, I paraphrased what you said in your introduction, Muhammad. You said, I like kickboxing, content creation, and reading. And I said, and I'm all done creating content and reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I should have said that, right? Uh, nice, nice. So my question oh, for you, Muhammad. Though. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. definitely. My question for you, Muhammad, is how have you seen your development teams respond to these changes in the in the the updates to their potential workflows have, have they responded positively to these changes what's been your experience with the with all that yeah so far the experience has been very positive i think initially it's been a new workflow to follow so there are complexities with that for example with the waivers uh, you know we realized that when we would ask developers to add waivers with the rego file it was quite complex just because they were not familiar so then we had to add these abstractions so there's definitely been some road bumps like that where this initial ramp up of the system has required a little bit more effort from the engineer's perspective. But at this point, we're getting very positive feedback. And I think the majority, if not all the engineers are very excited to when we work on removing the bottleneck completely because it significantly increases their efficiency. Nice. Yeah, because that's definitely one of the challenges with this. You can, you can, as a security team, put all these things in place, but getting developers to actually adopt it into their workflow could uh, you know, make that or nothing right but that's good to hear that they're responding positively in that well in that way exactly exactly it's one of those rare win-wins right because i think they were tired of waiting forever for reviews as well so this is one uh we're excited about and engineering is very excited about as well yeah absolutely absolutely uh i have some more questions but i don't want to take up all the time so eric micah anything from you either of you i'll throw one out um i was curious when you have a pr that gets blocked say it's got it, it's a critical or something happens what's the usual time to resolve on that is do you ever have ones that sit around for long enough to where it becomes irrelevant because the you know the the master branch or whatever has moved forward or anything like that uh not at the moment so so far what has happened with the block is as soon as a developer hits a block they'll reach out to us in the security channel and they get a response usually within the hour 
and then we look at nice. the VR, review it. Um, you know, the latest we're talking is maybe three to four hours because sometimes the on point is handling some critical, uh, you know, security issues. Uh, but usually it's a really quick turnaround time. Great. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds that's faster than I was expecting. So that's awesome to hear. Mike, anything from your end? No, all good for now. Nice. Mohammed, one last question for you. In terms of those uh, waivers, and maybe I misunderstood this part, but is it possible for developers to just waive like all the restrictions on their end? Or you, your team, the infrastructure security team, has full control over what can and cannot be waived? Yeah, so what we've um, employed so far is we do have security team as reviewers on the waivers. I think the direction that we're heading on is even with waivers, we generally want to give developers more flexibility. So if it's a waiver of medium or less severity, we're going to try to, you know, not have us as reviewers and let developers push that through. And then in the case of critical issues, we'll still be reviewers. At this point, though, we review all waivers. Gotcha. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any more. Uh... Oh, we have one in the chat from Muhammad as well. I uh, assume you can use custom rule to require resource or tag-based auth authorization for specific AWS actions. Is that correct? But what was the question one more time? You can use custom rules to require resource or tag-based authorization for specific AWS actions. And, and he, he ex, uh, expanded upon that, meaning the policy should specify a resource or a tag in the condition. Yeah, that that's 100%. So if I've understood the question correctly, that is 100% right. So... Um, the custom rule would need to specify that. Um, so in the case of say, and again, I'm not sure if I've understood the question right, so let me know if I get off track. But in the case of say, we're talking about a policy that's only specific to Yelp, you know, a custom policy, the custom rule would need to specify that. So it, it's hard coded basically in there, right? And that's also one reason why custom rules can't really be shared generically because while it's very useful to us, to someone else using that rule, um, you know, it wouldn't be very useful. Gotcha, okay. Great. Thank you for filling that one as well. And thank you for the question, Mohammed, in chat. Uh, all right, Mohammed, thank you so much for being here and presenting this talk. Uh, we appreciate having you and have a good rest of your day. Cool. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah.